Midjourney is better than all of the other image creators, and it is not even close. They just released a new site. I want to discuss the Midjourney website today. And originally, it was available only to those who had generated more than 10,000 images. Now it's 5,000 images. Pretty soon, it's going to be fully open to everyone. This is what the Midjourney website looks like. I'm going to go over all of the image creation options. We're also going to be discussing why it is the best time to learn Midjourney. There is actually an entire industry of people ready to learn Midjourney. We're going to be discussing that. And we're going to be discussing future image features within the Midjourney site. And at the end, I'll be discussing what feature I think is the most important to focus on. And then we're also going to be discussing Midjourney and using it with other tools like Canva for thumbnails and Instagram graphics. And we're also going to talk about how to prepare for the video features on Midjourney. Let's dive into the video. So here is what the Midjourney site looks like. Instead of looking like Discord, where you had to type in slash, imagine, prompt, now you can just type in anything you want. You can type in man with a tiger as a mom. And notice how as soon as I was done typing that, it just goes to the create and it has zero over one. So then we can say a woman with a tiger as a mom and we can see zero of two. And so it's just a lot simpler. Everything is much more one click, just type super aesthetic because they took a year or two to build this site. They were in the discord for so long. And as Nick St. Pierre points out, there are 18 0.5 million people in the Discord server. And so here we can man with a tiger as a mom, and it shows up right here. And notice how if you were to just type that in on the old mid journey, you see it's a square image, right? But it's the aspect ratio is different. I didn't put in any parameters. Well, you don't have to do that on here. Instead of parameters, you actually have access to all of it right here in this clean format. And so you might say like, what are all these different things? Let's take a look. So let's go over the image creation options. So first you have image size. And within image size, you can actually just drag this down like this. So you can do fully vertical or fully horizontal. You can also adjust the stylization. And so this can be turned up or down. We're just gonna use man with a tiger as a mom as the constant variable to test these. So man as a tiger with a mom at 300. Let's go ahead and run that. And you can just keep it open. So then we can go 400, 500, and then we can see the difference between the different stylizations. While those are loading, Let's take a look at some of the features that you can do directly on these images. So you can immediately click very subtle and then you can immediately click very strong. A very subtle just makes very small changes and a very strong makes larger changes, but it still remains somewhat consistent. So now let's take a look at the difference between stylization. So here we have stylized 600. Here we have stylized 500. And I just think it's really cool that you can just see this information. You just have the prompt for all four of these images, and then you just have all of the different variations, and then you can immediately make changes. But the cool thing is, is when we click on this one, it allows us to see a little bit different view here. So we can actually just scroll with our mouse through all the images that we've created here and it just slides through here and it has like this, I just think this bar right here is sick. It just, you just scroll down. You can just scroll infinitely and look through all of your images and it just flows. It's incredibly fast and we can find any of my old images and we can very quickly use these other features. So we can vary it subtly or we can vary it strongly. We can upscale it and we can upscale subtle or we can upscale creative. I wanna finish going through the different stylizes. Stylize 600, here we have stylized 300, 400, and 500, and 600. And so it just gives them different looks almost. And sometimes it's a little bit 
inconsistent. But once you find one that you like to use over and over again, it's nice to re retain this certain style. And so it's just fun to play around with this. Like you can't can learn this like a textbook. You have to learn this by trying different things. I just want to show you that process. Now let's go ahead and keep that same prompt. Now let's mess with the weirdness here. And we can see, so we can alter this. So we can start with 300, we'll do a 900, and then we will do an 1800, we'll do a 2400. While those are loading, I want to talk about Canva for a second, and let's go over to Canva. There's a new strategy going on in social media. You create like an image thumbnail, and then you go into a video. So on my so the, on my Instagram account, you can see here, if we were to click on one of these, we have this image with this gradient going up, and I'll talk about that in a second, and you scroll over, you get this kind of nice image thumbnail with a video. And I'm gonna show you very simply how to do this. So even if you're starting from scratch, just find some text, put it on the page, right? Get some text, throw it on here and find a font you liked, make sure that it is bright. Then what you're going to do is you're gonna take a mid-journey image that you can use and you can drag this and upscale it up. If you wanna use Magnific or something like that to scale it up, you can do that as well. This image, it's not great for, for rectangle images here. Let's go ahead and use one like this. This is a great image to use if we wanted to create some sort of headline, right? So if we were to use this image right here, what we can do is we can drag this up like this. This text doesn't look that good over the top of this. And I've realized, and I think an account called Wealth started this trend that just went absolutely viral on Instagram. The, the quick solve to this is to just go to Elements, type in gradient, I'll make it a little bit bigger here, and you can paste these gradients here. And what this does, if you bring it from the bottom onto the top here and just drag it up like this, it creates this really cool effect here. So I use this gradient right here, and it just creates this, it attracts the eyes to one specific part of the image. And then you can always right click and hit layers, show layers, make sure that the text is above that and make sure the image is behind it. And it does, it creates this kind of really cool thing. And so we can type in woman encounters her tiger mother asks for selfie. And we can see here, that if we were to if we were to download this as a PNG, I think this looks pretty good. And you can add your logo right here. And now we can actually take a look here at the weirdness. So we can see that the weirdness right here is 100. It's 2400 right here. And then we can see the weirdness is actually decreasing. So like, look at this. Like this almost looks like a man as a tiger and it's just quite strange. There's a lot more variations in this, right? Like there's a, just a lot more variations in these and you can see the variation and the weirdness start to go down as we reach 900 and then it starts to get more calm. Like it's almost like calmness and wildness is kind of how, how I think about this. And there's just kind of more emotion in these almost. And so you can also change the variety you can obviously change the speed and the model. And so I, you can also use a raw model and a standard model. Uh, you want to use raw if you're going for like super hyper realistic images as if they were photographs. Image size, stylization, weirdness, variety, which is the old chaos parameter, model and speed. And here's one of the coolest features. If you've used Midjourney before, you know that you can use reference images. And so what you can do is drag this straight up into this top bar here, which makes it so much easier compared to Discord. Because earlier, if you wanted to use this image, uh, this image here, you would need to paste the image into Discord, and then copy the image address, then every time when you're typing imagine prompt, paste it in here as this long, disgusting text. That is no longer. When you're using Midjourney, you can just scroll down, and you can scroll down this bar here, right here, this bar, you scroll down it, and then you just drag things in. So I wanna use that as a reference image, and I wanna use 
this as a reference image for whatever reason, and then it'll combine these styles. And then we can try this uh, with a tiger as a mom with an afro. What also makes this cool is you can do this directly from the explore page. Oh, that looks cool. Let's toss this up here. Oh, you can just go down the explore page, other people's images here. Oh, I want to make an image like that. Let's merge these two styles, this little alien guy and this cute little puppy. Let's see what that happens when we merge these two together. Let's do Falcon character flying over Atlanta. Because why not? Who cares? Now we can merge this little sloth looking thing with this guy right here. And we can just go character and see what these images do. We can take this like death skull thing and these guys playing the guitar. Actually, I don't like that art style that much. Ooh, yeah, let's go. Let's merge these two together. Uh, logo for future of content. We'll see what we get. So let's go ahead and take a look here at what we're generating. So when we merged these characters together, this this guy and this guy, we got this, 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 and this. Ooh, this is pretty fun. Oh, I kind of like this. Let's go ahead and use this as a thumbnail. Man looking at camera with speech bubble that says you got any change not that he's homeless or anything let's go see the next one so now here this is just a slightly different view here we have a logo for future of content and so it combined these two together and this is output one two three and four interesting and so that's when we put future of content in quote quote marks let's see what it did when we just said logo for future of content. Now without any reference image, this is what logo of future of content is. I like this actually. These are kind of the colors of my brand. This is sick. Oh, I think this is sick? Cool. All we have to do is press this heart button right here and immediately just save it, saves to your favorites. So it saves to your archive. And so in your archive, you can, with this nice sidebar right here, we can literally select liked and we can see it right there. In fact, that's the first image that I've liked on the site because I got access today. Here is that image and we can very quickly see the reference image in a new tab in full and damn, these images are starting to look good. And so there you go. Right now there's one main feature that isn't in this new website, and that is the ability to vary region. I believe you soon, you will be able to do this, and this is where you can literally select the different parts of the image here. So we can select Homer and Shrek here, and we can just select their bodies here. Shrek and Homer, both wearing Christmas sweaters and you can just hit go and within the site I'm sure you're going to be able to do this extremely fast just click it one button select the part you want to change and they might even have a better selection tool my prediction is that within mid-journey you're going to be able to click on an image you're going to open up any picture and just be able to select any part of the image that you want to change and it's going to be just like meta's segment anything where you're going to be able to go to any image and you're just going to be able to go yes i want to change that i want to change that I want to change that, but we don't want to change that. Let's go ahead and change this part of the ground here. And then you're going to immediately just be able to just type in right here. Be like, make these darker, make these taller, give them more hair, or give them whatever. And that's kind of the future of this is just editing everything. And then eventually they're talking about real time editing. So like you can select it just like you can on segment anything. So like just like you can on segment anything, you're going to be able to just select it and then you're going to be able to be like use brushes to move it. And then you're going to be able to import it into Mid Journey's new features for videos because they are creating a video model right now. And you're going to be able to adjust the frames of each video and you're going to be able to turn your images into videos, which is the future. And then if you think about the future, there's this tool right now that you can look up. It's called La La Moo. 
And what Lalamu does is it allows you to upload a character that looks like this where it's not speaking. And then you can <laughs> upload audio and you can generate a lip sync video with that. So you can generate how your character will move in the future. In the future at mid journey, you'll be able to up turn it into videos of your character moving and automatically apply one of these lip sync models so it, your characters can actually speak to each other. And then we're talking about creating movies and pair that with runway ML or something like Pika Labs. I get a window from a glass, he must get a window from a glass. I get a step, he must get a step. And you can do this with any audio. I can upload any audio I want and get that lip sync model put onto any video as long as there is a character with a face where a mouth can go. And so having full control over images or the starting frame of your videos, that's ultimate creative potential. I have a feeling within the next few weeks, everyone's gonna have access to the new Mid Journey site. I'm also gonna be making a much more in-depth video going through all the different prompts that I've learned uh, after scouring the internet, finding the experts and seeing what how they're prompting. And we're just gonna just, I'm just gonna make a massive presentation. So within my community, content fundamentals and AI tools, there is a learning Mid Journey with Shrek and Homer. If you click on the files and then click on this PDF here, and this is all free that you can have immediate access to. Here's a document with all these different prompts of Shrek and Homer. And we've even put all of these in parentheses here. So we can just immediately select this and copy this. And we can go back into Mid Journey and just paste this in here and hit enter. We can just enter these in as many times as we want. And we can just create different things. You can enter them in, change the variables. And with that said, thank you so much for joining me. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, hit the tip button, but just give me some buttons. Press all my buttons, please, goodbye, whatever. See ya.